Welcome to Dashbook. So you've got Dashbook open and you're looking at your first blank database. You have a good idea of what you want to do, but you just don't know the best way to do it. So you're, the first thing that's probably going to grab your attention is the business type. And you're going to be focusing on what's relevant to you. Your books, music, or maybe you sell a combination of books and music. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just use combination. The main difference is in books, Dashbook is going to tend to use the word author to describe your royalty holders. In music, it's going to tend to use the word artists. For combination, it's going to use royalty holders. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to stick to author because it's just so much easier to say. Now the next thing that you're probably going to focus on is either my company or more importantly royalties because that's probably why you got Dashbook in the first place. But before we can get our royalties we need to set up the database. And the initial setup tasks are to set up your company information and then the next three steps are to set up your royalty arrangements which will tell Dashbook how to calculate your royalties your products, what you're selling and what you're paying royalties on, and then your authors or artists or contributors who you need to pay uh, for their royalties. The Overall, the way Dashbook's going to work is you're going to be putting in sales. Those sales are then going to be compared against your product, your author, and your royalty arrangements in Dashbook to calculate royalties accrued. After that, then you'll be able to, to see what the, the balance due is to an author for any given point in time. So you can be entering in orders for all the way up until today, but then you can decide to pay accruals as of the end of the last period. And that's where the author balance comes into play. Then after you've determined how much you're going to pay the author, you create payments in Dashbook. That way Dashbook knows when and how much the author was paid and when the next period comes along, it can repeat this calculation and give you the balance for the end of the next period. So our first step is we're going to go ahead and set up our company. I can click here on the link. This is going to take me to a standard contact screen in Dashbook. You'll see this anytime you are entering in uh, your author or a customer or any other type of contact, like let's say you excuse me, you have salespeople, you can actually enter those in and you can have uh, sales commissions calculated on your sales orders. For now, I'm going to just go ahead and put in my company name. I'm not going to worry about address, but if I had, if I do put in my address, this can be used uh, as on the return addresses and on the tops of reports later on in the process. I click on select image, it'll open up uh, an explorer window and I can then choose find my a bitmap for my logo that will also appear on tops of many of the reports in Dashbook. Click OK. I come back. I've done my company. I'm going to go into products. I click on the green plus. I can start my product. I can enter in. I have s several different uh, product code types that I can use to identify this product. I can use ISBN, ISRC, ISSN, SKU, UPC, or ASIN. Actually, the, this isn't all I can enter in. I can actually create more custom types, which I'll try to show you by the end of the video. In addition, if I have, let's say, my ISBN, okay, notice when I just changed ISBN, it erased what I had there. That's because whenever you change this it's going to change the and show you the different value so I've got my ISBN typed in there I'm gonna okay I've got my ISBN typed in there I'm gonna hit all product code types and here you see I can list all of these different numbers and have them all tied to a single product for the most part this isn't uh, the, this is used mainly for you to be able to look up a product very quickly, very easily. Also, when you're looking at it on a report, many times the, the uh, default product code type will be shown. 
again helping you distinguish exactly which product it was it was sold and or which one is uh, being uh, paid for royalty purposes. For now I'm just going to go ahead and leave my ISBN at 10001. I'm going to type in my product name and now I have the option to put in a title. Now I don't have a title I can type in a new title or I can just add this product as its own title. The difference between a product and a title in Dashbook is that I can have multiple products, let's say they're different formats like paperback, trade paperback, digital, for book one, but then I have one title of book one. And the reason for this is so that for things like product type, I can have one marked as a book, I can have another marked as an ebook and each of those can have their own retail price. For now, let's go ahead and assume that this is going to be my paperback book. So I'll put that in at $7.99. And then if I add a second product, give it another book one. Now I can select my book one title here this ties these two products together. I'll make this an ebook and I'll make this five dollars. So now I've got book one ebook, book one book. Each of these are going to have separate uh, retail prices. I can actually set them up. Uh, a little bit later I'll be able to set them up for completely separate royalty arrangements as well. Now if I want to I can also add in a little description for each of these. To help me tell these two apart as well. This is just a label and it's uh, on many of your internal reports you get to use the product name you'll see the product name but on the reports that you you typically would send out those are all by title so that would just show the the overall uh, book one that's also important because when Dashbook is calculating your royalties it's going to be doing so by product but when it comes time to pay the author it calculates the author balance by title so I've, entered, I've got my two products put in here that are one title. I come back and now I, I click on royalties and on the royalty screen I click the green plus to create my first arrangement and this screen is a, the, a template for how Dashbook is going to calculate the royalties for your authors. We're not going to uh, enter in one for each uh, author at this point but we could if we wanted to, but instead I'm just going to put in a generic, actually I'm not going to call it default, I'm going to call it standard, standard royalty. Okay, now I tried to hit apply changes so it's warning me that I don't have a percentage or I'm using zero percent. I probably want something else so I'm going to go ahead and put in 20% and then I need to answer a few questions otherwise Dashbook is just going to assume that I want to calculate uh, well, I want my royalties calculated as soon as an invoice is created or when that invoice has been paid. The next part of the calculation is our royalty percentage and then is that royalty percentage going to be applied to the retail price of the product like $7.99 on our uh, paperback or is it going to be net, the, the actual amount of the sale? Or I could say fixed amount, like let's say the author is going to get 20% of $2 regardless of what the uh, book sells for. I'm going to go ahead and leave this at net, leave it at invoiced. Um, I also have the ability to uh, r reduce the amount per unit by these different amounts. So like for example payment fees would reduce the uh, the net by the credit card any credit card fees on the sale uh, of the product sales commissions can be taken out 
uh, or mechanical royalties in the case of music. Or if I just have a something in the contract where it's uh, less one dollar. So then it would be the net price minus one dollar times 20 percent. That is what the royalty would be. For now I'm just going to go ahead and keep this nice and simple. Um, and if I wanted to, and we'll get to this in another video, we can we have the ability to, to set up a royalty arrangement to use breakpoints and those breakpoints can change based on a certain amount of volume for the book so that as soon as a thousand units are sold uh, the royalty rate changes or once a certain uh, dollar amount in sales uh, has, has been reached then the royalty rate would change. In addition I can also have my royalty rate change based on uh, the amount of discount. So for example if it's over a 50% discount then maybe there's no royalties at all. I'll cancel, get out of that, set my uh, royalty percentage back to 20% and apply changes. Now since I had already saved this before this is warning me that it's about to recalculate my royalties. At this point that doesn't affect a whole lot but later on if you come in and if you were to say let's say you had three quarters worth of royalties and you were to change this when calculated from invoice to payment that could have a real big effect on your royalty balances for each period that you've already gone through. So this is just warning you that hey you're, you've made a change and it's going to have consequences. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, okay, now I'm back to my uh, setup wizard. I've gone through all the steps, I'll just go ahead and click OK. So at this point, I've entered in my company, I've done my royalty, I've done at least one royalty arrangement, I've done a product, I've done my author. I still need to set up my product and author because even though I've entered them in the database, they're not connected. Dashbook has no idea um, what author, who the authors are for book one, or what royalty arrangement to use. So here on the product screen, I'll go ahead and click on show royalty holders. It opens up my contact screen. I click on the green plus. Now I'll type in the author's name. Now notice over here, these little check boxes control what this particular author is uh, what type of contact this is. So this one is a royalty holder. I also may want him to be a customer in case I'm going to actually put orders in the uh, in the author's name like let's say he's buying books for friends and family. I'll click on apply changes. Okay and so now I have author one selected as a contributor. If I hit apply changes that'll save that. I can go to the paperback open up the pull down and I can select author one as a contributor there. Now I notice that my company is also listed as a uh, potential uh, royalty holder and contributor. You don't necessarily have to set up your company as a royalty holder you, but you can if you want. Next I'll go to the royalties tab. I'll select author one. I'll select standard royalty and as you can see it's going to charge 20 percent royalties and I don't have any sales yet. Sales classes we can get into that later but that basically allows you to um, uh, charge a different rate or use a different royalty arrangement based on uh, a sales class of an order coming through. So for example later on you may have uh, digital orders versus physical orders. I'm going to hit apply changes and next I'm going to go to my digital. I'm able to select the author, select the royalty arrangement. This time uh, for digital sales he gets a little bit more so I'm going to put it at 40 percent, hit apply changes and now I am done setting up my product and authors, or at least these products and authors.